The Auntie Show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. These are the voyages of the GNT Show. Our continued mission to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to Boliga, where no show has gone before. Live long and prosper, bitches. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the GNT Show, episode 270. I'm Terry Lynn, and across the table is Gettysburg 7. Joe Lantrew, and welcome to our show, the only podcast dedicated full-time to exploring the great Kukla, Fran, and Ali show. Yes, we are in episode <laughs> 270. What? <laughs> remember that show. You yes. don't. <laughs> yes, I do. You're not old enough. I remember it. <laughs> And Mike is scratching his <laughs> giant head of hair. As usual. Yeah. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Ceridium. God and it's Ceridium. <laughs> Good morning, me too. Mm, Gal Gadot. Mm. I know. She's so pretty. Mm, she's and so she, Jewish. Yeah. She what? So Jewish. Oh, well, yeah. That too. Mm. She's awesome. So, yeah, oh, for our listeners. It's morning. Uh, Matthew Anderson put in the trailer for Wonder Woman in the chat room so we're kind of checking that out um good morning welcome to episode 270 i can't believe we're we're getting close to it'll be 330 weeks really <laughs> did you do that math all on your own it's amazing no right i i can math uh, wow you're a regular sheldon oh geez oh i'm a little i think we're all a little tired this morning i know that it was uh <clears throat> I I had uh I've been awake since three. Well, two or three. Three, which so four. Um, yes. So yes, four. Okay. Um, <laughs> just because I'm not, I guess I don't know. It was like carry the nine. Yeah. But do not divide by zero. <laughs> what did you do this week? Coffee clutch. Alan and I. We uh, watched Star Trek Beyond last night. We got we have the DVD, we have the Blu-ray, and Alan didn't know we had the Blu-ray. So he's like, "Well, let's watch it." So we we watched uh, Star Trek Beyond last night. It is the only well, it's the only Star Trek movie post or JJ post. Uh, I should say JJ verse. Post we call it Kelvin timeline. Kelvin verse. Kelvin verse. A uh, movie that I ever purchased. I did not buy the first two. But I'm surprised uh, you didn't buy the first one. Somebody else bought it for me. Ah, okay. But I did not purchase it. Um, and I don't own the second one. <laughs> I did, and I could never bring myself to watch it. It still has a cellophane. Yeah, I just, it, it just. And the sad part is, is I remember some really good parts of it, but I just remember being so angry when I left the theater that I just don't want to do that to myself again. Yeah, yeah, it was all sorts of messed up, but it was a nice. Uh, and then it, after watching you... it again from you know at home last night, I can absolutely say I it really is in one of my top five Star Trek. Was there films. anything in it that you caught new this time? Um, I would say, yeah, it, it, nothing as far as story is concerned, but the things that I noticed last night were, um, the editing. Did you I, count aliens? There's supposed to be 50 of them on screen. No, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, no, I was really watching last night and I thought to myself, I was thinking to myself as I was watching through it, how excellent the story editing was to just little, little tiny little snippets that give you a little more character background that we never really got. And at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, the, the show, Alan and I, of course, were talking and um, I really did appreciate Star Trek Beyond for the way that it actually made me care about the character right. for the first time. And go ahead. What? First thing I think of when I think of that movie is the 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 scene between Kirk and and McCoy in the bar. Oh, brilliant, brilliant scene, brilliant scene. It really is, and one that kind of made me, you know, kind of almost forgive the first two movies. Yeah, <laughs> almost forgive the first two movies, and also absolutely allowed myself to kind of go. This is a new universe. This is a different Jim Kirk. This is yes. a different Bones. This is a different, and I. 
and I still like them. Now I like this Kirk. The Kirk, he grew up. The The three years under his belt definitely gave him um, some... Maturity. Definite maturity. D, and, now, are there, D, are there extras on the disc that you watched? I have not. We did not watch any of those. Last, by the way, this package came with three discs. Wow. Um, but what was amazing, I didn't know it. It was just the pre-order I got from Amazon, the one that came with the Franklin. Oh, okay. And so we opened up the Blu-ray package last night. I didn't realize there were, th- Alan goes, which one, which one do we use? <laughs> and who did? We'll come to find out each disc is a different format of the film. Oh, so, so DVD, Blu-ray, and like DVD 3D? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Blu-ray 3D. Oh, so it's not digital download or whatever, but whatever it is. Okay. Right. It was a Blu-ray. I love those. Blu-ray 3D downloads. and f- uh, 4K HD. Ah. And <clears throat> each disc has its own what? Right. So it's got the specials and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But we didn't watch any of those last night. We just watched the film. And I did. I afterwards I thought to I'm really glad I bought that movie. I'm really glad I bought that movie because it's fun. It's fun popcorn and I still cared about the characters and I don't give a shit about whether or not you like the Beastie Boy thing. I loved it. Yeah, and it was a nice tie back to the start of everything. Yeah. Yeah, especially the smirk. There's just mm-hmm. a little smirk that he gets and he said, Nice choice, right? Yeah. I was, it's great. And Jayla was listening to uh, Fight the Power. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it was just fun. Um, you know, I don't have any problem with the whole use of 20th century music. No. I really don't. It's classical music. Well, I mean, it's used in every other Star Trek, it uses 20th century music or some 20th century reference. Yeah, for some reason, jazz is okay. But, yeah, exactly. But rock is not. Right, exactly. Well, I mean, in in in, in, in the, the the film, they refer to it as classical music. Right, right. <laughs> and I, th- I thought that was funny. That was cool. It was cute. But it's just funny because once again, like we were talking about before we went on the air, mm-hmm. the 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 Uber entitled. Oh, we we can't have that because that's music that came when I was alive. But they can have Miles Davis because that's okay. <laughs> yeah, like some yeah. There's an automatic sense with some people that Miles Davis would endure, but the Beastie Boys won't. Yeah. I'm so why? Why do you think that? Do you think that it, that, why do you, is it, or is it just the fact that you don't like that kind of music? So therefore you would work to make sure it doesn't survive? That's bullshit. Yeah. That's like, yeah. Led Zeppelin. Right? Yeah, thank you. It will survive because it was uh, it was you know also incorporated. Zeppelin so incorporated the blues that. But anyway, <laughs> don't even want to watch this. <laughs> I don't know what his son put in the. Oh, oh I don't no. know. Oh, poor thing. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, son put a uh, a gif in the in the chat room of a basketball and the coach. Yeah, the coach. He just blocks that. He moment. blocked his own kid. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, wait, yeah. So the kid took it to the wrong basket. That's what it is. Yeah, and the coach was like, no. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Um, yeah, I, I have no problem with the use oh, okay. of See, modern Anderson, music. I have a problem with that because with- Megadeth is not classic rock, and it's not even good. Dave oh, come total. on. Okay, it, it, since we're on, I got to tell you. What? So the classic rock station here. They okay. Call them, I, now, I noticed they've switched from calling themselves classic rock to classic hits because. Oh, so they're bringing in the pop. Oh, uh, how do you follow? Uh, 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 oh, what's her name? Um, Pat Benatar with Mr. Mr. <laughs> and first of all, calling Mr. Mr. Classic in any way <laughs> is just an affront to my senses. And and Nick proves my point. <laughs> and then and then Watch Mr. Mister in three hundred years will be like the shit. <laughs> I will cut you. <laughs> and then, like this I don't mind. It's just very jarring to go from a Zeppelin song, of course it's the same Zeppelin song every other station plays because no radio station can have their own fucking but anyway, to a Skinner song. I'll give you one guess as to what song it is, Terry. To Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Classic, classic song, but Jesus, just a little jarring. 
Yeah, especially if you're not used to it on the same station. I mean, there's some stations like uh, that everybody gets, like the, what do I call them? They're not even like real radio stations. They don't have a whole lot of real jock. They don't have like real disc jockeys. Oh, jukebox they, radio. Or Ed, right? Yeah. Ed radio. Um, when they, I'm used to that because when I turn to Ed, I know that it's, it's a, it's a crapshoot with what you're going to get. Yeah. I, I didn't mind it. It's just, it's a very jarring I guess boy, we could have a whole discussion because growing up, and I, I know on the West Coast you had uh, certain stations, um, KHJ or whatever. But like on the East Coast, we had uh, WNEW, where the trend, they, 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 the DJs. Well, this is back when the DJs were allowed to pick their own records. Um, tried to make a flow, you know, to to make it yeah. segue from one right. song into the other. Yeah, or whatever was um, being pushed at the time. Well, right? WNEW was free form. Yeah. Did the, you see were... the? Uh, did by the way, did you see the article this week from Billboard regarding no, what? The, the? Okay, I'll put it in the chat room. Okay. It is the twenty uh, twenty songs that are turning twenty this year. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Foo Fighters, Sugar Ray, Blur, Fiona Apple, Radiohead. What? Uh, wait a minute. Um, what? Criminal? Which one? Fiona Apple? Yeah. Oh my 20 God. years old. I know, right? Karma Police by Radiohead. Semi Charm Life. Semi Charm Kind of Light. Oh my God. You believe God. that? 20 years old. <laughs> so another generation of. Bittersweet Symphony. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so well, a whole, a of, whole um, new generation joins the oldies club. Welcome speak, yeah. to our world, children. Speaking of 20th anniversaries, Friday, today's Sunday, yeah, Friday I started my, it was the 20th anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I started a, a rewatch of the entire series. Oh, very cool. Terry. Yes. Buffy. It's been I know. 20 years. I know. I know. I've been watching the whole, and, all and, of the posts. And, and and doing the rewatch, I can still say without a doubt, God, Sarah Michelle Gellar was hot. Yeah. <sighs> so, Mikey, you still awake? You still with us? I'm holding on. <laughs> still medicated there, pal? Not more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so, that would be a yes. Uh, Mike, we do have a few announcements to start off with. It looks like the O Sports Show has a new episode. Yes, they do. Episode 27, the French edition. The French We're already edition. on 27? Yeah. Yes. They're good. And they took... They took time off. Yeah, they took time off, too. So, uh, But good for them. I'm happy for them. Uh, check out their, their 27th show, and all their previous episodes can be found on their website as well. So, hey, go guys. <laughs> Go, Go team. Guys. Go team. Yay, <laughs> sports ball. Um and uh we'll say do you wanna do you wanna get live love play out there now or do you wanna wait? Um we we can we can get it done out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, GNT show. Last year from Live Love Play here to talk your ear off once again. Today I'm announcing Live Love Play's tabletop D twenty show, Exodus gods of Yukon, a post-apocalyptic RPG set on a distant planet in a far undefined future. The show stars myself as the overseer, the GM, the GNT show's own Terry and Mike, and also George Silsby, Mario Rodriguez, and Jim Cushman. The first episode will be released on my YouTube channel in the next coming weeks, with follow-up episodes and live streams coming exclusively to that YouTube channel. I'm live streaming three times a week on twitch.tv slash subsailor688. On Monday, I begin a marathon run of the Halo series, starting with the original Halo Combat Evolved. Ah, I hear that beautiful overture now. On Tuesday, I begin a new game, The Banner Saga, turn-based tactics in a hand-drawn Nordic-expired adventure about the end of the world. On Saturday, I begin my adventure in the dystopian, cybernetic future of Deus Ex, Human Revolution. Adam Jensen didn't ask to become augmented, but now that he is, the bad guys won't see him coming. In addition to my live broadcast, you'll find my entire library of live stream highlights as well as archived broadcasts. The archives don't stick around forever, so check them out while you can. On liveloveplay.com, you'll find a new binge-worthy, reviewing Rooster Teeth's interactive murder mystery, Eleven Little Roosters. This is Ross, signing off. Don't forget to live, to love, and to play every day. <laughs> he left that off. I can't he did. It. I'm a little so, surprised. I hooked him up. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and well, yes, maybe he ran did, out he, of time. 
Yeah, yes, you you did have uh, you did hear that right. Both Ceridium and I are uh, involved in the new D20 game Exodus with uh, Live Love Play. And uh, Mike, tell people a little bit about your character. Um, Come on, Therm, I'm a, awesome. He's yeah, awesome. Uh, th- uh, I call him Therm, Therm. Uh, or Thermal. Um, he's he's a 15 year old kid. He's on the run from something. Um, that not many people know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and um he he's a, alert. He's, yeah, a, really. he, he's a salvager um you know he, he's a tinkerer he, he 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 breaks stuff and he makes stuff so yeah and uh apparently according to the last uh episode he can't shoot worse shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you, well you're you're new to the gun <laughs> yes uh, my character is Corva. Corva is a uh, spliced genetic uh, mutant. She's a furry. Slicer. Huh? She's furry. <laughs> she is furry. She part of one of her recessive genes that uh, that popped out because of the the genetic. So she's like twit. a seventies porn star. She's like a. She's kind of like a. I don't know a, a werewolfy kind star. of thing. Oh, is she? She's like Ron Jeremy. I have the picture of her. Where did she go? Here, I'll actually update. I you're kind of even, like. You're not even going. With I'm the not Ron even Jeremy Jer- Ron Jeremy. Ew, ew. Don't you dare pick on the hedgehog. <laughs> the hedgehog. <laughs> I found, uh, you know how when you're you're developing a character for a D20 game and you've got to kind of pick find a picture of what your character might look like. Oh, there it is. Down. Da, 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 da. Um, this is the one I selected because it kind of came out the most. Uh, because her fur isn't necessarily. Um, there she is. That's kind of what she's like. And um, the, I like what there. Sensei all put in better. What the little give me cuddles and coffee? Yeah, look at those yeah. eyes. Yeah, yeah. She's not. She's a. She the fur doesn't play well. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It's kind of a. It's kind of a a, a detriment to her character. So. Um, but she's, she's fun and, uh, she's kind of a, she's a ranger tracker and, um, I rolled really, really shitty when I created her. So she has almost, <laughs> she has almost negative stats on everything. The fact that I actually hit something last week was remarkable. So, oh, no, <laughs> so give sorry. us a list again. Yeah. The, the wife just brought me in a nice bowl of, it's 21 degrees here. Oh, so she brought me in a nice bowl of cream of wheat oh, uh, and nice. oh, it hurt. Ow, that was me. This okay. Tuesday, yes. while Mike is off playing a game, <laughs> uh, Steve is going to be helping me. I'm, I have an interview set up. You ready? Don't hate. With <laughs> Kelly Thompson, the writer of Hawkeye. Oh, Kate very Bishop nice. cool. Hawkeye, and she's written A Force and some other stuff. So it's going to be very, yeah, I love that title so much that I, I asked her, I said, can we do an interview? Oh, that's awesome. Right on. Did you guys see uh, J.K. Woodward, his uh, sale, mm-hmm. the sale on his artwork? Yes. Oh, no, my I God. I'm putting oh, the yeah, link my... in the chat room. You've got to see the Mirror Universe shit that he's got in there. It's really amazing. Um, Mirror Universe Picard, Riker, Jordy LaForge. He's got this fucking kick-ass gun. <laughs> Um, really, really cool. Oh, G and T show now with Terry's own sound effects. <laughs> There's one for 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 Nick R- Romulans and the alien from Aliens. I saw that. Very cool. Like it would even be close. Romulans would kill him. <laughs> What's new in the Star Trek universe? General news. So Mike put this uh, link into one of the in his beautiful list of links that I kind of wanted to discuss with you guys. So I'm going to, it's not a very long article, but it's, it's called Paramount may follow Disney's release strategy. Uh, and it's on the website, dark horizons, which is a, a UK, uh, sci-fi blog. And it just says yeah, years ago, Walt Disney's Walt Disney pictures decided to change up how it, re- how it would release movies instead of a wide annual slate of about two dozen films. Like most other major studios, they would shrink their slate to around half that number buoyed by the acquisitions of Pixar, Marvel and Lucasfilm. They adopted an all tent pole strategy going forward, one that they could monetize across all levels. And with fewer titles, they could make uh, each one an event. It's worked for them though. Disney is quick quickly become the dominant studio in Hollywood with various others like Sony, Paramount and Lionsgate struggling to keep their head above water while others like Fox and Warner's need some retooling. Now Paramount looks to be trying at least partly to copy what Viacom 
what Disney is doing. And Viacom CEO Bob Backish telling an investment gathering this week that they plan the plan will be to work more with Viacom's core cable networks like Nickelodeon, Nick Jr., BET, Comedy Central, and MTV to collaborate in developing movie and spin-off TV series. Quote, Disney essentially now they run a defined slate. We have an analogous opportunity with a different set of assets that will help people understand what types of projects we're looking for and will help us differentiate those projects in terms of promotional support we're able to give them, unquote. The comments come as former chairman of the 20th Century Fox, Jim Giannopoulos, has emerged as the front runner to run Paramount along with Michael DeLuca overseeing the motion picture division of the studio, but no deals are yet in place. Former Universal co-president Scott Stuber has been rumored for the big gig, but he's expected to run Netflix's expanded motion picture division. So, um, do you think this is going to be a viable strategy for Paramount? And Nick and Mike, what do you think something like this will affect a uh, an IP that's kind of co-owned like Star Trek is? Do you think well, we're well, going to see... Well, um, for, for, some, for some of, of their properties, it's a good thing. I mean, like, for, like Transformers or G.I. Joe or... You know, um, I think it'll be a lot easier for them to come up with spin-off shows and 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 uh, different you know films and whatnot um, than it would be for Star Trek. Now, if they because they're they're licensed just for films with Star Trek, so it seems like there would have to be whole new licensing negotiations involved to even consider I, going that direction with Trek. Yeah, and and that's kind of my sadness with it. I I look at this and I think Paramount does have to do something along those lines. It's just kind of unfortunate that unless they actually kind of really move forward with Kelvin timeline and make, you know, and really do something separate, we could have two Star Treks. Well, it's not that unlike Marvel Studios, which is owned by Disney. Right. But yet does not have the rights to X-Men because they sold that to so long ago so you have star trek with rights in one and another that's why you don't hear the word mutant in the actual marvel studio the marvel cinematic universe right they're not allowed to right which is so weird that they can't use a word yeah because mutant is an actual thing it's not even like a made-up thing right but it is kind of brand specific when we talk about mutants we know it's x-men right well not necessarily Oh, I do. I have to. I have to give him credit for that one. I I really do think that when I when we talk about, at least in the context of a character or or you know, so they created their own and now they're Inhumans. Yeah, they right? call it, well, no Inhumans is part of the uh, no they they just call them Metas in the Marvel. Mm -hmm. Then what are Inhumans? Inhumans. Uh, see, here's the the thing. Inhumans are. Um, from an, a, a, an alien splicing. They're not oh, okay, mutants. I see. Yeah. Mutants are natural. human that are evolved. evolved. Oh, okay, I get it. Or mutated, shall we say. <laughs> let's, let's so, snow, but, so, 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 Snowman Frost says, we have three treks. Don't forget about Discovery reboot. Okay, one, Discovery is not a reboot, so I don't understand what you mean by that. And Discovery is still prime timeline, so it's still Star Trek. There's CBS Star Trek, and now there's Paramount Star Trek, which is part of the reason why they created the Kelvin timeline to begin with. I really do believe that. They know that they have to move in separate directions, because, especially now because we know that the remerger fell through. I think, I think in order to get this to work, they, meaning CBS and Paramount, they're going to have, my, these are my thoughts only, they're going to have to create an independent committee or or group or kind of similar to to what Disney has done with Star Wars, Marvel, where there's another entity essentially that kind of oversees and kind of collaborates between the two. Um, kind of like a three-person independent audit committee to go over finance. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. I was not going to go there. <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk. Should we talk? We should talk about no. that. Uh, yeah, we'll let Go Semantic ahead, Shenanigans talk about that. Sorry, Mikey, we didn't need to derail you. Resist. 
but I mean, you you kind of get the idea of what, mm-hmm. what I was going with. I mean, I think that's the way that the only way that they would be able to get that to kind of work is to well, kind of say, okay, uh, we understand you want to do Star Trek. We want to definitely want to do Star Trek. Let's not step on each other's toes. So let's kind of. I don't want to say shift power, but kind of, uh, kind of have an interim group that that kind of manages. All right, somebody get Van Sitters on the line. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, here's the I other thing. I'll volunteer. Yeah. Obviously. Well, the other and here is the you know, and part of the problem that has been, and and it's been a problem more on Paramount's side than it is on CBS's side, and that is we all pretty much know now that CBS is the one that holds the rights to all merchandising, even for Paramount stuff. What a colossal fuck up. Well, not, not fuck up as in bad, just a, 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 just a fucking it's a, mess. It's a tangled... It yeah. is a very tangled, very interconnected web between Paramount and CBS, but it's still also very, very defined. So CBS holds the rights to the name, the merchandising, and the ability to make and distribute television shows and all other forms of digital, so television, internet, streaming. The only thing Paramount has the rights to do is make Star Trek films. They don't even have the rights to merchandise their own Star Trek movies. CBS does that, which is why J.J. hated it. J.J. And... Had a I can big, understand big, his big his pissed. dislike of well well he went but he he also misunderstood and thought that you know that he would he would be able to pull a, a Star Lucas Trek. and and be able to make money For off Star of merchandising yeah. it's yeah. not his IP to make money off of he's weird we heard that before oh I tell you right and wow could oddly you have enough, sounded it's, it's, Terry you just yeah. say, oh I'll tell you yeah We're, I'll tell you Fargo yeah. <laughs> thank God oh I'll tell you. And I'm not even from Don't the Midwest. Don't you know? <laughs> Stop, please. Don't you know? Oh, um, oh, this is such a cool and it's a uh, cream of wheat. It's very, very uh, unique. So the idea that Paramount will is is looking to do some. They're going to have to come up. Uh, they're going to have to come up with a kind of a either a retooled, renegotiated contracts with CBS in order to do what they want to do to make them the, the, uh, Star Trek work for them like uh, another IP does for Disney. Or they're going to have to come up with something completely original and just and go from there. I mean, I don't. They have they have the rights to Transformers, which they've kind of beaten into the ground right now. Um. I love their animated stuff. I'm just saying, their animated the, stuff is fantastic. Oh, the Transformers? Oh. Yes. Speaking is that Paramount, of, though? Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of animated stuff, yeah. um, the wife got me Justice League Dark, the new oh, animated yeah. film. First of all, I love it because the guy that played Constantine in the TV show does the voice of Constantine in it. But I really enjoyed Justice League Dark. It was so much fun. Very cool. Nick Totoro does the voice of Dead Man. Very- Remember him from NYPD Blue? Yes. Yeah. Oh, how fun. It well, is so much fun. Well, I was telling you guys last week, I think, about um, the Disney HD stuff that I've been watching. Uh, Disney XD stuff I've been watching, right? And one of them is called Milo Murphy's Law that Weird Al Yankovic does the voice for. And Christian mm-hmm. Slater does the voice of his nemesis. It's pretty funny. I am. Um, there's some great stuff out there. We were watching Teen Titans Go yesterday. And, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It, it, I actually... It, that show makes me laugh out loud. <laughs> but there was one. The joke was so simple. They they, they were doing a, a high school yearbook type mm-hmm. thing, the, the Teen Titans yearbook. And Robin wanted to literally be in the book because he only had one picture in it. And, um, it, yeah, it's it's so stupid. But he, like, literally wanted to be in it. He kept bugging Raven to put him inside the book. And she was like, no, no, no. So he's like, well, can I at least sign your book? She's like, okay. So he signs it. He goes, read it out loud to everybody. So she reads it. And, of course, it's an incantation that puts him in the book. But she reads it out loud. And then the actress is so great because she just goes, I'm dumb. <laughs> and it made me laugh out loud. <laughs> I'm dumb. Well, kind of getting back to uh, yeah, the sorry. idea. I, I no, love, it's okay. No. I love uh, Teen Titans Go. It, I'm, I'm telling you, some of the best entertainment right now is an animated, ver- is an animated format. It really is. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, we were just discussing with regards to that whole kind of CBS Paramount kind of division and inter- interconnectivity also plays against CBS in that they're allowed and they get to make the television shows and the streaming and why we're getting discovery on CBS all access. Um, they're also the ones who are able to make any other version or, you know, and, and distribute 
<clears throat> anything except a major motion picture for theatrical release, which also plays against them because unless you guys didn't know it, CBS Films is their movie studio underneath the CBS um, they don't get to make Star Trek movies, but they have a great reputation for being very, very young. The company is not that old. I think they're maybe two or three years old now, but they've made movies like Inside Llewellyn Davis, The Duff, Pride, Patriot's Day, Hell or High Water, which just got nominated for a, um, uh, an Oscar, um, and The Sense of an Ending. These are all an American assassin. These are all CBS films. So they actually compete with Paramount now on that. And uh, I don't know if you saw that or not. And it's kind of, it's got to be frustrating for both companies not to be able to do the multimedia thing with an IP they kind of co, they kind of cohabitate with and they can't, they can't really do the full spectrum so it's it's frustrating as a fan going okay we we're only going to get kelvin universe movies now and we're only going to get prime universe television shows yeah um i mean i was very disappointed when when rumors of of a potential uh buyout or merger were, were going around i i was so disappointed to, when when that turned out to be when it's fell through i mean you weren't the only one that a, that would have been so great it would have for solved star a trek problem i really think it would have solved some quite a few problems but Wait, unfortunately which thing? huh which thing when the merger the re-merger oh, yeah, between yeah. cbs and paramount fell through and yeah. cbs could have bought paramount right out i mean it's got the cash cbs is the stronger company everybody in case you didn't understand that <laughs> cbs is a far stronger financially set company uh, Viacom and Paramount are the ones who are having some bad issues right now. So they're the ones who are on rocky ground. Um, so uh, be that as it may, I heard a rumor we have an ask Dayton, do we? Mike? We do. <laughs> did, you, did you get it, Nick? No. It's in the in, in our chat room. Um, since, in our team speak. Yeah. No, in, in Facebook. Oh. Is where the document is. Since uh, you you like to to read those, I thought I'd let you take care of that. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. okay. So uh, we'll Damn. just vamp for for a few minutes. Me. Uh, Quick vote. Yeah. Oh, so wait. One of the things that I had to tell you when was that article that I had just read from um, was it Dark Dark Horizons was the name of the was the the guy who the first comment on that article out of the gate was I was telling you I was bitching I was laughing about the entitlement of this guy. The first article or the first comment is some guy by the name of Classic Wingers. He says, "I'm getting pissed off with Disney. Their movies are never on sale." Iron Man 1 is still $19.99 on iTunes, for fuck's sake. $15 if you buy the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> oh, I did. I have to laugh. And I'm like, what makes you think that you are owed a sale? <laughs> if It's called supply and demand, you idiot. If it's in demand, the price will remain high. Go fuck yourself. Did, plus, did he say it was on, on like iTunes or whatever? Yeah. Of because course, they, still, they never have sales. They never have the, sales. The it's Apple. It's do not, not Disney. Have sales. Twit. Although Google, I have to admit, they have sales. <laughs> Google Play, yeah. Uh, the, it's their first, fifth anniversary, and they've been throwing all kinds of stuff at me, trying to get me to spend money I don't have. Where at? Google Play. Oh. <laughs> See, my problem is I have to kind of watch myself because I have the new Google VR. Mm -hmm. oh. from, yeah, the little thing where you put your phone in the little uh, virtual reality thing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't downloaded any apps for it yet because I'm afraid that if I find a whole bunch, I'll be just sitting there. I, I have in to watch reality. the spend because then the wife yells at me. Yeah, I understand. Not Alan doesn't yell at me, though. Oh, well. So, do you have an ask? It just mind? opened, okay. <clears throat> ask D. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll be right back. She's not going to stick around for the ask date. I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked. Surprised. Right? Yeah. Should we wait? <laughs> keep, re, keep, keep vamping? Yeah. This, um, is, this, is, this is weird. This is... She loves Dayton. I mean, yeah. I know. It's like the rudder stuck on the ship now. We're just going in a circle. <laughs> I need more Star Trek stuff. Product news. Did you see that the 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 Star Trek 
tiki glasses. <laughs> I think those are cool. Yeah, very holodeck worthy. Yeah. I want and oh, it's a new another new item for product news. Um the Voyager 4 CD collection uh that's coming out. So they're taking uh, that music. The yeah, music. the soundtrack. Yeah. I you know what? I don't remember any music that stands out voyager and i'm not picking on it because it's voyager i it's, it's the same thing with enterprise um i i just don't remember like with at least with tng like the board music stood out on its own you know what i mean and and in ds9 it happened more often in tos than it did in the other oh, series it seems T- like. yeah tos has some of the classic you know the the Da, 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 exactly you know from vulcan to from a mock time and some of the others I'm sorry, but I don't remember any Voyager music that stood out. I guess I I, I don't I don't either, but I don't watch I, I haven't watched Voyager in quite a while, and um, it for me it's not my favorite show. Right. So uh, there's less inclination for me to you know pay attention to the little things like that. Um, I'm sure if, if, you know, someone who, who absolutely loves and adores Voyager, you know, they, they could spout out, you know, the, you know, song, uh, music that they, they, that they would like. I think Um, the the only music I really remember from year, from, from Voyager is in Year of Hell hmm. when she was getting ready to, to ram the Voyager into Anorex's ship. But other than that, I don't remember any outstanding music in, in... Oh, Paul, I will fight you on that one. <laughs> oh, Terry, you're back. I'm back. Yeah, sorry. We weren't going to do S. Dayton while you were oh, gone. Oh, thank you. Terry, sorry. I mean, uh, what is it, uh, Sunset, that we were yes. waiting while you fapped? <laughs> uh, no, I'm better now, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too much coffee. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, okay. Son, we were better than that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, we were talking about the Voyager soundtrack, and, and speaking of Dayton is kind of why I brought it up. He, he loves the Star Trek soundtrack, well, soundtracks in general, um, and Voyager, they just, they're, they're the four CD Voyager CD is coming, is CD set's coming out, so. Um, and that got us talking about, you know, who are there memorable songs or uh, music from voyager i thought voyager's theme was pretty yeah the th- I, I do like no. the theme but... yeah but i'm talking about music from the series itself like a mock time the original series had that oh. classic and oh you the know, classic and, fight and, music of course and the borg music from tng well there are you certain know, the, themes yeah but in Voyager, does any do you have any standout music? Tell us about about it on Facebook. There Yell at go. us about it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And, Perfect. And add a clip to it if you can. Oh, that'd be awesome. Please post to our page. Please also share and ask people to like our page as well, if you would. Um, that would be very, very helpful. Yep. Uh so All we right. do have an ask Dayton. Thank we do. you. Dear Dayton, I need your advice. Dayton. Number 121. Dear Dayton, how do you organize your rewrites from first draft to finished manuscript? Signed, Dave Chappell. Dave Chappell. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. My Cobra buddy. (laughs) (laughs) That's so wrong. There's only like five people that get that, and that's okay. And all of us were crying. Oh, shit. That was a funny day. I think there were six because the waitress, I think she kind of got it too. Okay, Dayton, sorry. Dayton's response. I can't speak for other writers, but I lay my edits out in counterclockwise fashion. Thanks for the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know I that I'd call say, my... That was almost a Dave Chappell response. Cause, I oh, know. That's pretty damn funny. I don't know that I'd call my rewriting process organized. I'm not even sure that I call it sensible. I suppose if I had to classify this part of the writing cycle... I'd slot it somewhere between necessary evil and too scared to submit this festering pile of elephant shit to my editor for fear of having a contract put out on me. Here's my deal. (laughs) I tend to edit and rewrite as I go. Basically, I might play with a sentence season even as I'm writing it, trying out different words or phrases. Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Sorry, that was me. (laughs) 
<laughs> trying out different sorry. words or phrases, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> or reordering it so it flows better after the preceding sentence, and so on. Once I get a paragraph or two, or maybe even a whole page put down, I go back over that section to make sure it's the way I want it, then repeat that process for as many times as it takes to complete the novel. Sometimes I get on a tear and write for long periods without spending a lot of time on reworking things, but usually I end up revisiting the output before moving on. The result of all this weirdness is that when I finally get to the end, the manuscript is probably 80 or 85% of where I want it to be. Next, I do what I call a polishing draft, which along with a check of spelling and whatnot, did not use what He time. totally did. Sweet. No. <laughs> check of spelling and stuff is where I verify that I didn't leave any plot threads unresolved and make sure I didn't do anything stupid. You know, using a character killed in an earlier chapter or turning a left-handed character right-handed or flipping somebody's gender or whatever. Hey, goofy shit happens sometimes. What I don't do is go over and over and over the manuscript m multiple times, at least not before I deliver it to my editor. As a writer, Dean Le a writer I admire, Dean Wesley Smith, cautioned cautioned against that years ago. And one of it's one of the gift he think about. <laughs> a writer I admire, Dean Wesley Smith, cautioned against that years ago, and it's one of those bits of advice that stuck with me. Basically, he believed that all those rewrites usually serve to drain the life or energy from whatever creative spark gave birth to the original story. Instead, he's a bit... You know what, Terry? Put a, what? put a little sticker next to that, because I have a comment about that. Instead, okay. he's a big advocate of writing it, doing a quick edit, and calling it done. Over time, I adopted my process along those lines. Now, years later, I'm usually fairly confident that what I deliver to my editor is going to pass muster, and the notes I get back are always pretty minor. Almost always pretty minor. It's when I get copy-edited manuscript returned to me that I give the whole thing another comprehensive read-through. At this point, it could be as much of two months since I last looked at the thing, so I'm able to bring fresh eyes, fresh eyes, <laughs> to it. I also know that it's likely my last chance to make any major changes, so I take advantage of this window of time and fix things I've decided to mean revisiting, revising, revisiting, or revising. Hello. Hello. You're, you're on fire today. Yeah. All right. All the while while copy ed addressing copy editor's notes. I blame daylight savings time. I don't blame you. A month or so later, I'll get the type manuscript, which is basically a PDF what the final book will look like. <clears throat> Excuse me a minute. <clears throat> he needs a drink. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. This phase represents my last chance to make any sort of changes or fixes. And except for extreme circumstances, those updates have to be very minor, like replacing a word choice or something similarly limited. That's not to say there haven't been some wild rides, like finding out that the entire middle section of a book was nothing but blank pages, or the page headers at random intervals show up a different author or book title. Yep, those real things have really happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, 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 what? Like finding the entire middle section of a book was nothing but blank pages. Oh my god. Or that god. the page headers at random intervals changed to show a different author or book title. Oh, bummer. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's just I, checking to see if you're paying attention and to actually uh, doing your work. No kidding. I, I think they do shit like that as a test to whether I'm re actually reading the damn thing. Oh, how funny. Look at you, oh. Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm not even, I didn't, I'm not reading ahead, I promise. Wow, so that's there funny. you go. That's my process, which I grant might come off as six or seven different flavors of fucked up in the minds of some people. But hey, it works for me. That vodka. I've developed this approach over time as I've grown accustomed to writing pretty much everything on a deadline. I simply don't have the luxury of torturing myself with a manuscript or dicking around with a writer's block while waiting to engage my muse. <laughs> there are bills to pay, faces to feed, and other projects waiting in the queue, so I've learned to just get on with it and leave the second guessing at the door. I can't say I recommend my method for anyone who's just starting out and still finding their way through various twists, turns, and other weirdness to be confronted as one attempts to tame the written word. As with pretty much every other piece of it writing advice out there, your mileage may vary. Good luck, you glutton for punishment, you. <laughs> Thank you, funny. Dayton. Thank you, Dayton. And it's an interesting question because I know that David is, uh, uh, also writes. So um, uh, good question. And it's always neat to, to get a little insight. Now, you wanted me to put a little sticker on there? You yes. To? Okay. He says, basically, he believed all those rewrites usually serve to drain the life or the energy from whatever creative spark gave birth to the original story. And there's the problem with Hollywood today. Oh, it's today isn't yeah. that just isn't that just like a, a problem that they've had since oh forever um no because actually if you look at some of the old wonderful b movies 
um, <laughs> you know, the second show on the on the at the drive-in, they they were made cheaply and just to be put out there. Mm-hmm. You know, like like your beloved Day of the Triffids. It yeah. holds up because it was done well, pretty much like he did his. It was also based on a on a sci-fi story, right? But but what I'm saying about... is, is now you see that they had this rewrite and that rewrite, and then this yeah. person came in, and then they switched writers in the middle of it, and and brought in a whole new team of writers after they got rid of the new best writer, and all of this, and this is why you see some some of the muddled messes that you see, and and, and that goes to kind of what we've been talking about since we all started this show years ago, and and that was. Um, and that is the uh, the fear of risk, and which is what Marvel doesn't do, and why their de- their MCU has been. They take sometimes little known directors and writers and say, "This is what we want," and then let them go at it and approach it from their viewpoint, not the corporate. It has to have this. It has. To have oh, spider. I don't know about that. They've already lost how many? They've lost a few potential directors. Look- yeah, because but when you look at what they put out, the number that they've lost, I mean... Well, here's... It's very, very few. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Disney has in place a very, very strict rule book by which you have to play to make their movies. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is their formula. That is a formula. It is formulaic, but it fucking works. But it also, like, it's like James Gunn with Guardians of the Galaxy or the different John Favreau with the first time... They, they allow their directors to be very, very different in, but in their But they don't approach. allow their directors not to 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 tweak a story. They they just are No, like, John you're, Favreau you're... has for the Iron Man's. Well, it's also Favreau's baby too, in a way. Because yeah. isn't he Marvel? No. Didn't he come through Marvel? Through Marvel's he came to Disney via Marvel, correct? No. He directed a bunch of stuff before that. No, no oh, I meant, but didn't he start he doing was a Marvel work before... before Disney bought Marvel? Yeah, he did Iron Man one. He did right, the first Iron right. Man, right? Yeah. Which, which was prior to the Disney purchase. Yes, yes. So that's what when I meant. When was the purchase? Uh, before Iron Man three. Was it before the Maybe? Avengers? Actually, no. It was right after Iron Man one because uh, they didn't. Marvel Studios was completely independent. Right. And it was a huge risk for them to do Iron Man one. And Disney, they of course, smelling success. Did they bet they they bet everything on that movie. Yeah, they did. The entire the entire company was on the line with that movie. It really was. Now, see, that's a ballsy move. That is a, a ballsy move. But they had a great story, right? They had a great actor, a great story. I think character that's driven. What, I think well, and John Favreau was a fan as yes. well. And so that's like putting that. That's like um. That's like uh uh uh. uh What's his name? Oh my God, I can't think of his name. Who plays Scotty in the new movies? Um, Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg writing Beyond. Yes. Got a fan. Yes. God. And even last night after watching Beyond, I was like, thank God Pegg wrote this movie. Now, it was, was so Justin good. Lin a fan of Star Trek? Of the original series? Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, there you go. Yeah, he was. He, you can go one of two ways. He, Star he Trek, grew up kind of where I did. He grew up in the city I went to high school in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, See, I think with Trek, you can go one of two ways. You can have somebody who's a fan like those two, or somebody like Nicholas Meyer who didn't know what it was, so they come at it with fresh eyes. Yeah, and both can play very, very well. Um, uh, I am, admittedly, when it comes to Discovery, I am still a little... Everybody's nervous, you know? I'm not. I, I trust... Nicholas no, I'm not, Meyer. Because Nicholas I Meyer, trust, yeah. Well, I trust Nicholas Meyer. I trust Chris Kirsten Meyer. Oh, who doesn't? Um <sighs> but Nicholas Meyer is a self confessed non fan. He Um I don't think he, he is anymore and Gene, after hearing him at Farpoint. He's not, not a anymore. Fan. Um but Fuller was. Right. And then he left over we don't know what creative differences. And that concerns me. Snowman Frost is picking a fight with you as he's wont to do. Oh, what's he saying? I'm not the last Trek movie was the worst of the three. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever you think. You're entitled to your opinion. I thoroughly disagree. I think it was the best of the three, and it's still in my top five of all Trek films. <laughs> and you didn't see that because that was me flipping you off, but I love you. <laughs> I loved it. I stood in it. I loved Beyond. Um, but I am. I was a little concerned when Fuller left. Um, uh, but oh, did you see the the tweet from Stella, the Star Trek dog? No. Grab the remote. Star Trek's on. Tell 
television news. This week. Okay. Do you guys follow Stella? You guys got to follow Stella. Yeah. Okay. Stella is Nicholas Meyer's dog. And she is in the writer's room and tweets from the writer's room. And she tweeted this week. And all it said was August. <laughs> It's a lot of work for a dog to just get that word out, isn't it? It's a lot of work, handwritten, yeah, and script I mean, too. Big, big, you know, big paws, little button. Oh man, yeah. I have to, I have to find Stella. Uh, you guys, you guys, vamp for a bit. I'm gonna find Stella. I've, um, I haven't had time to do anything this week. Um, yeah. How are you feeling? I'm, 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 I'm feeling better. You know, and my my stomach is not. Uh, giving me trouble anymore. Thank goodness. Although early in the week it was kind of, uh, is that the start of something? Is that the start start of something? I don't know. Um, so I was I was worried there for a moment that I was going to relapse, but uh, it, it turns out it was just gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gas. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you say it was gas? He did. <laughs> it's gas. Need some chili. All right, where did this go? Come on, Stella. <laughs> Terry, don't make me do it. What? Stella! I know, she's awesome, though. All right, I'll find her. Thank I'll just you, search for her. Stella. Stella, Star Trek dog. Dog and she is. Patrick Stewart's Copy, head. paste. Did you see the videos of Sir Patrick Stewart with his new yes. baby? Yes. This is his foster doggy. Have you seen this, Nick? Yeah. They're fostering the pit. Her name's Ginger. And she's so sweet. Oh my God, so cute. Well, Stella, Star Trek dog, I just put the um, the Twitter handle in the uh, chat room so you can follow. Uh, again, uh, is Nick? she is Nick Meyer's dog. <laughs> she goes, I go to the Star Trek Discovery Writers Room every day. I make sure they keep working. And I also go for walks and nap on the floor. She spends her time between Los Angeles and Toronto. But on last week... Nicole DeBoer is following her. <laughs> it's a funny account to, to follow because it's very cute. Um, like, by the way, February 3rd, there was an audible sigh of relief on set today when we officially crossed the Genevieve Bujo line with the cast. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. Ah, la, la, la. Um, oh, Nicole DeBoer, why do you have to be so beautiful? <laughs> Stella Star Trek Dog, January 11th. The replicator and transporter are totally different. I'm a German Shepherd, and even I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she had tweeted just one word, and it just said August. So we are all making rather big assumptions that the show will premiere in August. So. Well, that's kind of what we were were thinking. Um, we uh, there, there was some discussion about September. Mm -hmm. Then Moon V's came out saying uh, late summer. Um, and then now August. So, I mean, that's still all right there in that same time frame, you yep. know? So, um, but that's good. That's, that's good that they're kind of, you know, thinking we might be able to actually get this done a little sooner. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll be August. Although September is not that much longer of a wait, although <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. E either way, I'll be happy to, to see it when it comes out. So, Nick, do you have yes. a topic? Do you have a topic for us today? I do. Yay! Um, real, real quick. Yeah. Um, uh, another tidbit of um news that I think we should discuss real quick. Um, let me find it. Television news. Television news. Television news. Where's the damn TV news? Uh, there it is. It's probably under T. There, there. Actually, there's, there's like. Yeah, there's a few of them. A few of them that I want to discuss, uh, or at least mention. Oh, um, the idea of CGI Spock, yay or nay? Hey, if you saw Rogue One, they did it with Peter Cushing and... And, uh, and uh, um, Leia. Uh, Leia, yeah, exactly. Carrie Fisher. It yeah. worked better for me with Tarkov than it did with Leia for some reason. It, it didn't... Once I got used to the idea and as long as... And it, it, and it was character driven, I got... I was okay with it. I'm, um, I don't, mind I'm, it. I'm, 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 I'm thinking to be honest with, to be honest with you, I, I would almost say my, I'm, I'm torn. I almost say recast it. I think as long as it's used like maybe a, 
an old they make it like they're looking at an old log or well since a discovery would be a prequel some kind of like log or transmission or something but to not have it as a regular reoccurring somebody walking around Does that make sense? yeah I would if if it's a um seldom or infrequently used. Yeah, and it's like a transmission format. Well, I mean, this is all supposed to take place like ten years before TOS. Right, so they can be talking to Sarek him while he's a, on the the Pike's Enterprise. Right, and Sarek is going to be a recurring character because we already know who his, his his character's been cast. Yeah. So how often would he need to be involved in speaking with, or they would be in? in I don't know. Um. I, I again I'm torn. I'm kind of torn. I'm part of me is like How do you feel, Mike? Yeah. I mean it's I think it's cool that there's the technology to to be able to do that if they wanted to. But it's one of those things where it, for me the last thing worked really well because it was that short little snippet at the end. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it was just that one little moment and for me that 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 was the perfect use of it um as a prolonged conversation as a character that's going to be reoccurring now that's going to be a problem and i i i i, I would rather see someone recast for the role I agree. Uh, if there, if it's going to be something that's going to, if there's the potential that it's going to happen more and more as the series, I hate to say it, but fucking make it Zachary Quinto. Oh, that would be kind of interesting. Although, isn't he a bit old now? He's ten years before TOS. I think he's still very young. Because wasn't, I mean, Leonard was how old when he played the role in the original series? Uh, Sixty-two. But Vulcans, of course, he was already. he was already you know, Mike, eighty something, I was being funny, Mike. right? I think he, I think he's the perfect age for it. To be honest with you, mm. well, tell us what you think on our Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, please. We're gonna post a, we're gonna post a question on our Facebook page. Please share the fuck out of it. And, and Dayton did share, did uh, did comment and uh, oh, did? on 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 my, on my page when I had posted it. And, uh huh. What did he say? Um, I Sorry, don't. Remember. That's why we're not getting any Facebook traffic. Mike saves it all for his own page. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly what it, oh, what it was, cool. but um, yeah, I'm I'm my 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 gut is if you're gonna bring him in and if he's gonna be recurring, I I'm just not one for. Hey, if there's anybody, if there's proof right now that your job could be replaced by technology, it's even happening in Hollywood. So if you're yep. an aspiring actor, you're fucked because. God forbid an actor pass away or not be able to play a part. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I'm torn. I, as much as I loved Leonard and as much as I loved his character, if it serves a purpose, recast him. Recast him. That's all. Let's just move on and, and yeah. grow up and realize that it's okay. You know, how many Darrens were there? <laughs> I, think, I think in a case like... <laughs> Peter Cushing in Rogue One. I think they did that because Tarkin was such an integral character to yeah. Star Wars, and you really couldn't have put anybody else. In. It wouldn't have made sense to have anybody else cast as him. I, I, no. So here's a question. Okay, we know that Carrie Fisher finished her yes. work for Star Trek Eight. Star Wars. We also know. Yeah, I'm Star sorry. Wars. Star, oh, sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Oh, that would have been awesome. Oh my god. Um. It, it finished her work for Star Wars 8. We also know that her character is too and was supposed to be a major focus of Star Trek 9. Star Wars. Recast? I was fucking Star Wars. Fuck, fuck. Sorry. Star Wars 9. Do do you recast? Because you're not going to CGI her. Or are you going to have to rewrite your whole film? I'm oh. almost thinking rewrite. Yeah, I think I think they're going to have to rewrite. You, you For an actress. Yes. What if another actress can play the role and it's character driven? But it, 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 they, they would still have to rewrite it for that other actress rather than having that other actress just be Leia. Why? Why can't the, Why can't another actress play a role? It worked. It worked well in in the Harry Potter films That's when true. Michael Gabon took over for it. It, it, it was a, a main character that they had to recast because they died because but it was a refocus. That they didn't have to rewrite also... the films. No, but that character was also uh, pretty much, I, I don't want to say hidden, but 
I have no idea what character you're talking about. What in um Harry Potter? Dumbledore. Uh, yeah, they Dumbledore. They had to recast Dumbledore. He the the beard and everything. I didn't know it was a recast until later. Well, yeah, yeah Dennis, I mean, no I, offense, but the that, Clarice that was, Starling thing, I don't, I don't buy. The the reason why that didn't work was because it, it how many talk about a, a film that didn't need to have sub- yeah. sequels. That's all. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I was going to say, I have to agree with Nick. I mean, there, there was so much makeup, you couldn't tell that the, that it was not the same person. Oh, Here's how I, hey, I, Terry, I thoroughly disagree. Huh? No, I, I, I honestly didn't, Terry. I knew the voice seemed different, but it wasn't until you told me that I found out it had been recast. You couldn't tell the difference. Not really. Nope. Oh my God. Two totally different people. Here, here's one for you. Let's if Ellen Ripley had had to be recast after Aliens. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver made that role hers, and I think that's the thing with Carrie Fisher. Leah is Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher is Leah. I don't disagree, but what if your story? Why would you change your entire story? Uh, no, I agree. Uh, I just, uh, I is this a thing? Where What's more Star important? I don't think Wars you have fans... to change the entire story. I mean, if, is hey, it, what if is this what a if... thing where Star Wars fans would accept a new actress? Well, that's the whole thing, you know. Uh, uh, it comes down to it. If her character, if her character, the, if Leah's character is supposed to be so pivotal and is supposed to be the focus of the final film and is kind of like, uh, why would you dump all of that potential amazing mythos for? Who would you cast as Leah? I have no idea. There's got to be somebody out there. There's a ama- there's thousands of incredibly no, I talented agree. I agree. actresses. I agree. Is there anybody that's jumping out at you? And by the way, yeah, I just want to say this. Um, I was watching Hulu the other day. Yeah, and I had when had you heard that they had made a Ghost in the Shell movie? Oh yeah, because there was. A I big did not even of, know that was. Being oh, made. there was a huge when she, when Scarlett Johansson was cast. It caused a huge beef, as you can imagine, with people going, uh, "Wait a minute!" You know, I just she's not even Asian. Yeah, you, let me address that. Can you? Ma- I know because. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, whitewashing. Why do you have Matt Damon in Great Wall? Um, I'll tell you why. And there's a very good reason. Well, that's because that's the way his character is, right? Well, no, because Matt Damon is a huge star in the Chinese market. They put him in there because he's yeah. such a huge star yeah, in yeah, the Chinese market. Yeah, he's market. a draw. Yeah. So when they accuse of whitewashing, we're in an age now where sometimes you have <laughs> to look what, at – folks? Movies aren't being made for you. They're being made for China. They are. Exactly. And just like when people were like, oh, well, Tilda Swinson as the ancient (laughs) one in Doctor Strange, you know, it's supposed to be a guy that looks like Dumbledore. Well, that's fine. But the thing about Tilda Swinson is she's so androgynous that there was kind of an air of mystery and it didn't bother me at all. Yeah. At all. She's a weird person, too. Um, (laughs) No, she really is. But that's cool because that's. That's fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, when, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of the, oh, they're, they're whitewashing or they're manwashing when the realities of Hollywood are, it's a business and they're going to cast it for whatever's going to make them the uh, most yeah. money. Unfortunately, it is the truth. Now, here's what you can do as a consumer if you don't like it. Don't see it. Don't see it. Don't spend your money on it. Tell Hollywood you want something better. But remember, use there's your 27 wallet billion it, Chinese that will go see it. And there, there you have it. There, there, there you have it. Um, yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to try to change the subject. But... Uh, no, and I was just going to say that Scarlett Johansson is that kind of star, too. She has enormous box office appeal overseas. And here, don't get me wrong, but it, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. So what was you? What were you going to switch to, Mikey? Uh, the last thing I wanted to, to mention mm-hmm. is um, Isaacs. Yeah. Speaking of Harry Potter... <laughs> Uh, we did get the news this week that Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, has cast uh, Jason Isaacs as the captain of the Discovery. Uh, if you do not know who Jason Isaacs is, uh, then you need to watch either Patriot or the Harry Potter films. Harry Potter films, he played uh, Lucius Malfoy. and um, He's as, the dad of uh, the Malfoy kid, right? Yeah, the long, okay. yeah, the evil, blonde-haired bastard coward very pale almost all oh my god dobby's boss okay um Um, 
So let's see. What this is big say? news. This is big news. This is he's a big name. Unlike uh, unlike previous, uh, there again reminding people he is not the lead character in Star Trek Discovery. He's the captain of the Discovery, and uh, according to all of the reports, he's not the main role. He is a he's a main character, but he's not the lead role. Yeah, that would that be still remains. Yeah, Sonequa and Martin Green. Right. Um, w- what I find interesting is that the role would be cast so late into the production which to me kind of hints that actually the... it was the announcement of his casting that came oh. out a little late people are under the impression that this has been cast for quite some time and he actually posted a tweet boy a week ago that pictured the a chair like a captain's chair and it said i hope it's comfy and then he deleted it and then he reposted it after the formal announcement was made (laughs) so we don't know how long it has been since he's really been cast and how long he's been working in toronto but it there, there is a rumor that he's been there for quite some time. Okay, because I, I, I was thinking if this is a new casting, and and they're just getting now getting around to casting the, the captain of this ship. I'm wondering if if the, one of the premises is they're looking for this lost ship, Discovery. You know, why is um, it lost? Don't know. Maybe the Klingons have it. I don't know. I don't. How know. do you know it's lost? I don't. Why's it got to be Klingons, Mike. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I was just speculating. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's like, what are you, where are you pulling this out of your? Oh, you're pulling it out of your. Ass, Literally okay. out of my ass. Okay, <laughs> that's what he's been doing for the last two weeks, Terry. <laughs> you gotta do something while I'm sitting there. <laughs> so I think. Cobra. <laughs> Cobra. I think the title for this week's show: "Pulling It Out of Mike's Ass." No. <laughs> Is that, no. Cobras and I have um, an idea for the title, but we'll talk about that after. That. All right. <laughs> um, and there was also a, a, another kind of background character, another uh, crewman that was cast. I, I think. I, I think so, but I thought we might have discussed it last week. I don't remember. Oh, okay. We may have. I don't remember. So I'm I'm actually very excited. He's an exceptional, exceptional actor. God, I hated him in Harry Potter. Oh, and that's why he's. I know. You're supposed to hate him and Harry Potter. <laughs> albino prick. He's, he's, I know he's not albino. But and he was, he was such a weenie. It, there's yes. no other way around it. He is the quintessential weenie. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, he was actually. He can play a good guy. He can play a bad guy. He's so talented. The reason he was so good in it was because like, he didn't yell or anything. He was just menace. Oh, and absolutely terrified yes he is the perfect example of what a bully is somebody Mm -hmm. who is bullied and just makes the shit flow downhill yeah and and absolutely has zero spine zero spine it's a great character that's the name of my next album zero spine (laughs) but i'm very very excited also um Star Trek Discovery is expected to get uh, access uh, to get all access to four million subscribers. That's pretty there good. was also a, an interesting post. I don't know if you guys saw it, um, where the official Simon and Schuster showed that Dave Max tie-in novel will be available <gasps> in 2045. <laughs> did you I see that, Mike? Loud. Mike, what? did you see that? Did you see that? No. The, the, they had uh, they had tweeted Simon and Schuster pockets had tweeted about Dave or. That Dave, oh, it was Amazon or something that yeah. they listed Dave's new book for the Star Trek Discovery's tie-in novel would be released in uh, 2045. So we said, oh, we have to wait another 30 years for No wonder Star Dave Trek looks Discovery. so tired when I saw him at Far Point. <laughs> He's, and you know, poor Dave Mac, he doesn't. He's just like, like I haven't heard that joke before. So, um, you can pre-order it, and he's been. And tweeting. hopefully, your kids will, or your grandkids will get it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it was just a way for them not to uh, not to give away when the book would actually be released and give you a tip as to when the show would actually be released. I think oh. that was done on purpose. I want to play a Star Trek game. Gaming news. I have uh, a question for for um, Francis Albert in the crew at Cryptic. Oh. So I I want the J. Okay, sorry. Might get your dealer over to Terry. Um, 
So I downloaded Star Trek Online onto my Xbox One, and I'm about to take it off for one simple reason. You know how when you're in, you hit B and you get the little firing reticle that comes up on the keyboard, the little, the little rectangle oh. in the middle of the screen? Yeah. How the hell do I get rid of that and just put it on auto-targeting? I don't, in, in the on, console? On the Xbox One, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um... We have the PS4, and we haven't played it because there was still that camera problem. Where you we see, couldn't... I'm not having that. Oh, see, that I think it's – I really – I don't understand what that is. I have to get back in to see if it's been fixed, um, but um, I don't know. I don't know if there's auto fire. There's oh, got to be. There's not. I'm not playing because it's just too much of a pain. Do you, how do you play in PC? Do you just click? Are you a, a, a clicker? Yeah, okay, yeah. that's why I am as well. I, I I click my powers. I will I will cycle through using the tab button to change targets. Like if if I'm in a space battle and somebody's closer to me, but I'm already engaged with somebody else, I will change my targets. But I I, I don't you tab want, through them. Yeah, I yeah. don't want the to have to. Sh- to, I just want it to auto target. There's got to be a way. There has to be a way. I can't imagine that there isn't. And I've but gone through I've the controls. I, I've gone through everything, Mike, and I can't find it. Oh, did I tell you that I got sound on my Xbox One, Mike? I think you mentioned that last week, yeah. Yeah. Because, see, we got the new curved HD 4K. Right. TV. It had. My wife looked it up online, and she she comes walking out with her laptop, and she sits on the couch. She's like, "Okay, do this. Go to options. Do this." So we had to go into the TV, and because you had digital, you had HDMI, oh. you had all the different outputs. So, and then the next thing we know, I I heard the uh, the music for World of Tanks, and we were like, "Yeah, awesome, very cool." Yeah, I will look into that. Um, and if anybody plays Star Trek Online on Xbox, and you, and if you do know the trick, uh, please let us. Please put it know. on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please put it on our Facebook page. Um, so what's the topic? Oh, by the way, I still want the J. I and I did. I purchased a whole bunch of R and D boxes, but I did not get my J. I yeah, I would sell my J if I got it. I hate the ship that much. Which? Oh no 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 no. Let me buy it. <laughs> I really want it that bad. I want it that badly. I just gave away the 23rd century dreadnought. I'm just saying, ice. Have you, you checked get the, the J. I want it. Have you checked huh? the exchange? I don't. I she only had. Beth only has like 200 million. Oh, that's in all. EC. That's not Thank much. Thank you, Paul. Thank Sell you, some Paul. keys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I could do that. Why? How much oh. are keys going? For? Yeah, how much are keys going for? I don't know. I haven't been oh, in game in, in months. See, is it a, a Terry? What, how do you, how can you, you spend one point five billion EC? Oh, are you allowed? Not are you allowed more than a billion? I thought it was capped at like a billion. Yeah. I thought it was capped at like nine hundred ninety nine million. I don't care. I want it. I want it. Terry. It's a pancake with two I sticks coming out the ass. Love it. You might. Like, Terry, it looks can, like a supermodel I on don't the Paris care. runway, a, a, an anorexic, bulimic supermodel. I love her. I think she's beautiful. I bought a bug ship for $450 million. Yeah. Months. Jesus, Paul. Yeah, I have. Christ. I, she only has like $200 million, so I'm never going to be able to afford to, to buy one. But I only have like $4, I want four million. I so bad. It's, it's Star, Star Trek, Trek Death, Death Star. Star. Okay. <laughs> it's a spatula with nacelles. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll take it. Beat beat me up. I don't care. I love that. Shit. You don't think it, it looks like I think it looks... one hit would cut it in half? There's no there's no um It's it's a ship from four hundred years past the the timeline we're currently playing in and no, Dr. I Eckler understand, but created no... it to say that the technology had exceeded that. So no, I think it would withstand a whole bunch of shit. So there. And the enemy technology would Possibly. be advanced as well. Well, she was in a big old fight, wasn't she? That's when we saw her. Loved her. Fell in love with her. It's hideous. <laughs> it has, Just I'm buy trying a to think promo of the word. It has no... Sell them on the exchange, a promo pack. It's so th- what is the word I'm looking for? Not, not heft. It has no Oh No, no she's all grace. She's all grace. Oh, she's so pretty. Really? I love, you I think love those her. Na- I'm being serious. You think those those nacelle struts are graceful? Yeah, I do. Needles. So sweet. Like stilettos. I like them. I don't know. I just, I think it's the, the thinness of it is that what mm-hmm. really gets me. Ah. I don't. I I get that. I I I have people have given me crap for loving the J ever since I fell in love. No, with No, no. I'm. I, it's very much an aesthetic thing. 
Yeah, I I just for some reason I think she's gorgeous. I'm not um you know I like things thin and sleek and beautiful and I'm all right with that. Like never mind. oh yeah the KDF version does look like. Did you see the the Romulan version, Nick? No, I haven't. Oh, ho, 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 ho. son, somebody post a picture of the Romulan version because I think it's pretty fucking special. She's so pretty. Well, of course it is. It's Romulan. But you're gonna hate it because it's thin. Well, maybe not. <laughs> There's a certain beauty to Romulan architecture that you humans just can't understand. Uh, well, either way, you can get the J in the new R and D boxes. Uh, it's a it's a it's a chance of a chance of a chance of getting one. How um, many are there? Have they said? Is there is there like a number that they put out that are available? No, they never say that. They never tell you how many are available. It's just a random chance. Mm -hmm. It's like a uh, um, hey, when yeah. I got the Kelvin prize, Enterprise, yeah, prize, yeah. Or the Kelvin Connie, I should say. Uh, it, 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 it literally, for a there second, I had to look and say, <laughs> That's a bad angle. Oh, I see. It's based, It's like my tattoo. Kind of, yeah. And its wings are going forward. Wait, so is that the engine coming out the back, or is that fire? I think that's fire. That's phaser fire. So, or I should say disruptor fire. So the wings kind of are sloped back. Isn't it cool? I think she's beautiful. They did a good yeah, job I, But she's thin. I love the wings on it, because it's exactly like my tattoo. Um, it's, I don't know. I'm... The arrowhead. Oh, that is. Wait a minute. That second picture. Yeah, the front of it is the, the arrowhead. That's the that's the front is where. No, see the second picture. The arrowhead they is the back. The arrowhead is the back. That's the tail. And the then why are the, the phaser fire coming that's out of the back? That's not phaser. That's engine trail. Engine light. On the second photo. On yeah. both photos. So it's flying sideways. It turned probably. Oh yeah. It skidded. Yep. Okay. Those I love the, the bridge area then. Yeah. I, I love that. I. The arrowhead, oh, cool. I, 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 love, I don't know why, but the arrowhead's giving me a little, I don't know why. It's the tail. Yeah. It's a bird's tail. Yeah. It's cool. I do like that that's the first raptor raptor since yeah. the uh the uh the one we saw i can't think of that the, oh my god the one we saw in nemesis that denatra was in oh the it starts with the valdor uh yeah yeah the valdor but this this to me says raptor mm -hmm. it's beautiful so that oh, there's the, the klingon and there's the klingon version yeah just, that just again, looks like a uh, big old bortusk it looks like somebody took a play-doh and stretched it out yeah, it's too dark. I can't see it. I got, really? Maybe I got bad eyes, but I can't see. It's just a, a black blob to me. I don't know. That looks almost like a eight four seven two weapon in the front. Kind of. Sadly, that's almost the only part of the ship I can see. <laughs> wow, they're both really clear on my screen. Yeah, they're on my screen too. Actually, quite pretty. And again, actually, see, I love the nacelles on the Klingon ship. Real thin, needle like. Those just... look like the nacelles of the the Enterprise from Star Trek: The Motion Picture. A little bit. I like it. See I like them shape. all. I think they're beautiful. And I still Jerry? want one. Huh? Mike? Hello? I'm yeah. Here. Hello? Oh, Mike, check. You... Mike, check. There you are. There you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the last be, thing I, I heard was you said you liked the nacelles, and then I said they look like the yeah, nacelles we heard from that. Enterprise from the motion picture. And I said, and yep. I didn't hear anything after that. Oh, I said, yeah, they do. It's cool. And then I said, I really like them. Okay. And I still want one. And I still want one. Um, So there. I, I will, I'll empty out the rest of my Zen to buy some more R&D packs. <laughs> but to be honest with you, the good news is, is that at least it's R&D packs. And also, uh, I can use them. My alts need some, uh, crafting shit. So at least that'll work out. You need things, do ya? I do. Uh, do. Um, oh, there yeah. you go, Terry. That's cool. Boy, those are cool. Yeah, that looks just like my tattoo. That's neat. That's yeah, really, really cool. Them. Yeah, the that's neat. Is sexy. It is. I like to see. I like them. I like them all. And I want that on a t-shirt. My God, look how huge they are, though. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I'll get one. I'll find a way to get one. Um, so what was your topic? I know that Mike just stepped away real quick, but what was the topic that you wanted to discuss? Oh, um, it's not so much from the show. Okay. But we've talked about, they've had like the Star Trek Green Lantern crossover, the Star Trek, uh, X-Men crossover, mm -hmm. all of that. What? And it doesn't necessarily even have to be Federation. It could be Klingon. It could be Romulan. It could be Cardassian. What kind of crossover would you like to see in a comic? Like, I think a Cardassian um, alien 
crossover would be really cool just because of the Cardassians and the way they are and everything. Oh, you mean like what kind of Star Trek within a Star Trek universe crossover kind of thing would you do? Yeah. That's actually a good that's actually a really great question. Um, let's see. What would I find fun and like here's one for you. And, okay. and I think I'd mentioned it before. The xenomorph from Alien loose on Deep Space Nine. That'd be fucked up. Just the possibilities with Odo. And, oh yeah. And, you know, and, and you know, Garrick. I I could somehow see Garrick being the star of that one. <laughs> the the thing. Yeah. It, they would Alien versus Eight Four Seven Two. Oh. That was Keith Genesis. And and imagine assimilated xenomorph. Oh Jesus. Um, could they assimilate the xenomorph? Would they? I don't think so. They would try. <laughs> Crossover Star Trek and X Files. Mulder that... finally gets his aliens. <laughs> you know, that's funny. And that's last, really funny. Last night on, uh, I was watching Buffy and it was from first season. Uh -huh. And you remember Giles? Oh, yeah. I love Giles. He, he was saying something and Buffy goes, don't get all scully on. <laughs> the one, the, the, you know, that uh, Anthony, is Anthony Michael Head? Anthony Stewart Head. Or? Anthony Stewart Head. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of people who want him to be the next Doctor Who. Yeah, I think it'd be great. Um, the um, I'm trying to think of a great crossover for Tribbles. Oh, when Mikey comes back, I have a question. Okay. For you guys, please remember it has to do with Tribbles. Okay. And you mm -hmm. and your so-called Federation Enlightenment. <laughs> Okay. That's another reason why I hate daylight savings time. I'm so tired I'm going blind. I just gave myself an eye exam. I Are you failed. Sure you're okay? I'm tired. Then I realized my eyes were closed. <laughs> Please tell me you're joking. I am. Okay. <laughs> because I was really gonna say we need to wrap it up then. I okay. went to use, I went to use the restroom, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, right. since you're back, I I have a question for you all. <clears throat> okay. So his 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 topic, well, it, but he has another question. Yeah. The trouble with tribbles. All right. I'm with you. Terry. Yeah. At the end when it was all fun and games and they asked oh, and Scotty what he did with the tribbles. Yeah. It was pretty fucked up. Did you laugh? I was sad. I was like, dude. No. I, the first time I saw it when I was young, I probably laughed. Mm -hmm. So you laughed at genocide. Yeah, I did. It and was fucked up. for all the people that love Scotty, he's a mass murderer. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been actually nicer just to beam them into space? I don't know. Do they... Do they die in space? I don't know. But you know what's going to happen to them when they got beamed onto a Klingon ship. Yep, probably the same as the... Uh, the fact of the matter is, Tribbles were a pest to people who needed to eat, right? Tribbles versus Gremlins. There's your crossover. There you go. Thank you. I was like, where would the crossover be? Mike, we're talking about um, what crossovers would you like to see involving Trek? And one of them that Nick brought up was Cardassians versus Alien, mm -hmm. which I thought was good. Or, or Alien on Deep Space Nine. Or Alien on Deep Space Nine. Do you remember that old horror movie, Critters? Oh, yeah. They were basically fuzzballs with, with teeth. Yeah. They, they're evil tribbles is what they are. They're evil tribbles. Yeah, exactly. They're cannibal That's a tribbles. great, yeah. The Critters tribbles. versus tribbles? Yes, yes. Okay, make it happen. Yeah, but Tribbles wouldn't be able to fight back. No, but they would just eat. The critters would starve to death. <laughs> That's not really a fight. T-A-S <laughs> Tribbles got bigger. That's, That's true. true. They, they... And then when they popped, <laughs> there were thousands so of little Tribbles. So gross. <laughs> <laughs> There you uh, go. I would like there to see. Of course, oh Matthew yeah, comes God, I remember rescue. those. I would like to see something along the lines of. Um, let me think. Oh, I just thought of one. Oh, what? <laughs> Is this any crossover? temporal office of temporal investigation? In that Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> office of temporal investigations crossover with Agents of Shield. Oh, that'd be fun. I was thinking. Um, I would like to see just Rocket and Groot. <laughs> <laughs> Just the two of them. <laughs> Imagine Spock and Groot together. Totally. Groot. <laughs> Spock would be the only one that actually understood him, I think. And Dr. Ree with Dr. Rocket. Dr. Ree with Rocket. Uh, just Rocket. Just Rocket and Groot on A raccoon on, like, on, a, on a dinosaur? Oh, wow. <laughs> a raccoon it, with a big old gun on a dinosaur. See, yeah. but I don't even say a Titan crossover. It's got to be kind of anti or, or or something a little bit different than that. And it would have to be something that would really piss off Rocket. Jurassic World. 
No, I was, like it, Toss. Yeah, it would have to be like the original series or something where he or, would be just like, what a fucking because he would be TNG just like because they were all you know peace and exploration and all this. Yeah, Rocket would want hey in order for this to work, I need the androids. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, I think he and Riker would probably find a way to 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 find middle ground, but oh my god, to, those sit, two to sit down with with Troy, Troy would try to you know, oh my god. <laughs> I just I need that a, I need a rocket in psychotherapy with Troy. That would be fucking hilarious. And Data and Groot, I am Groot. You have said that many times. I <laughs> do not understand why you keep repeating that. <laughs> just so I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> and Riker would just be laughing his ass off. You got to admit, a Star Lord Riker conversation. Star Lord and Riker. Oh my God! Right? Dance off. <laughs> Dance off. <laughs> Dance off, bro. <laughs> Sensei, I was like, TNG, unbearded Riker versus Tremors Graboids. <laughs> <laughs> now, mm. the Doctor Who crossover, mm. I actually Pond. own. That's for the, the J.K. Woodward did. Uh, <sighs> Amy fun. Pond. Look at her. Was even, in, even in illustrated form. Those were fun. Perfection. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would have to. I would have to say. I would love to see just a rocket group, or even a Guardians of the Galaxy. I think a Guardians crossover. of the Galaxy, because could you imagine Worf with Dax, with uh, Drax, and all the people confusing um, Gamora for an Orion? Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> that that would be good. I, okay, that's what I want. I want Picard, Guardians of the Galaxy. Picard, TNG. trying to figure something out, and <laughs> Star Lord. Okay, I have a plan. I have a plan. How much of a plan do you have? All right, tell me about. It. Well, it's only about twenty percent. <laughs> I need this in my life. Well, that is Mike, the one I. Could you imagine the conversation between Drax and Worf? It would be literal. <laughs> yes. It'd be so literal. Or, or Drax and Data. Yeah, if Drax would actually find a few friends. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I think they all would. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of the cool thing about it. Yeah. See, they had the X Men. Yeah, I remember over. that. I want. Yeah, I want Guardians of the Galaxy TNG. That is the one I want. That's what I've decided. I the still Borg. think. I still think. Um, Farscape and any Star Trek. <laughs> See, I've never seen Farscape. So would um, would be in yeah. would be perfect for each other. I mean. Uh, the the far state escape crew that they get they're kind of it would be almost like uh a naglas a na a na a na a na very well, similar so thank you saying. very similar to to kind of like <laughs> firefly um as well i mean although that that there are no aliens in there i think that would be an interesting type of crossover as well um where it either the Farscape crew or the Firefly crew, crew they're on the run. They'd be almost like this, the Maquis, you know, in, from, from DS9. Um, kind of like this rogue element that the big bad, quote-unquote, big bad federation are, are trying to track down and kind of bring to justice. Um, it, it, it takes the, the whole idea of a, the federation and kind of turns it on its head, you know, by making them be the bad writer. guy rather than the good guy. A Riker and Mal. Riker interrogating Mal. In Firefly? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's an unusual one. Here's word. one for you. Neelix, did... Neelix with um, uh, uh, Rigel from Fire, Farscape. Uh, uh, Rigel is this little oh, toad. Oh, yeah. And, the the uh, pilot. He's, no, he's not He's not the pilot. Pilot is a whole other thing. Oh, you're right. You're right. He is a whole other thing. I apologize. He, he, the pilot would be a naglas, a, 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 similar to, <laughs> similar to. Analogous. Um, yes, that word. Similar to Barkley in the episode where he, yeah. you know, built the big machine in the holodeck and hooked himself, his brain up to it, you know? Yeah, that's pilot. Uh, that, that's pilot. Um, but Rigel, he's he's this little toad. He 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 loves to eat, and every time he eats, he 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 farts helium. Yep, he so, farts helium. So him farts hanging out with helium. Him, yes. yes, he farts helium. So he, I think him and Neelix would just get along great. <laughs> Locks. Oh my god. Well, but, I, um, what about I, you? Locks you. and 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 um. Oh man, I can't think of the blue girl um from uh from Farscape. Oh, I can't think of her name. China, China. Um. No, uh, not Kiana. Uh, the uh, the, the other one. Uh, 
uh, pop i think i want to say it's like paku ren i don't remember oh yeah but she um she was like this uh healer slash um herbalist uh, she she was a plant person uh so so she was she always had these these plant like um zan zan yes zan uh, she always had these um, plant-based remedies and stuff, and I think that that would be very similar to Sp- uh, Phlox, who had the animal-based. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought that, that those two would be kind of interesting, kind of debating who, you know, whose approach was better. What about you, Nick? Was there a favorite of yours crossover that you want? Flora versus Fauna. Somebody did. It was a, a like a, a a little fan thing where. They did a BSG Star Trek mashup, and it was really cool um, where the Enterprise comes in and winds up destroying a base star. But I would love to see a DS9 BSG rebooted crossover uh, because they're both from Ronald Moore. Oh, so. that got me. That, that has me thinking. Um, what's that? That TOS episode with the android girls with the little number on the. Um, oh, con- mud. Is it a mud episode? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so. Replace all of them with sixes. Yes, please. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, please. That's good. That's good. Uh, I'm there. (laughs) You'd be mud. Oh. All right. Is that Rachel? Is that supposed to be Rachel Garrett? What is? What is that? I don't know. It's cute though. It it really is. Is it just? Just something somebody did. I don't know. It's very cool. It is cool. Um, okay, I think that kind of wraps it up. Mike, do we have any announcements? Uh, I think we didn't get a chance to mention, but uh, oh, it's straight frozen. Out- oh, it is. Oh, it is. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, straight out, Gallifrey has a ha- uh, finally has a, a new episode. Thank you, Steve. Thank Steve you, has Steve. Been invaluable. Congratulations to Straight Out of Gallifrey for another episode. Congrats. Yes, and thank you, Steve. Steve will be up at two o'clock in the morning his time on Tuesday to Wednesday to help me on Tuesday. Very cool. I'm looking forward to that. That's the next Gettysburg address, correct? Yes. Yay. With uh don't Kelly forget Thompson. to to uh please, 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 we really do want to get our Facebook numbers up. We're having no trouble with Twitter, you guys. Please share, get the Facebook page out, even tweet it, please. Um and uh we'd like to get our likes up on um, it's the the only thing that we're really trying to do now is we're gonna be pushing for Facebook. So thank you and for your be- support. It helps us to get more coverage. access to covered things right. to then right. totally screw up when we're talking to you. <laughs> uh, and that kind of does it. Um, I have, uh, again, I just want to thank everybody for listening. And uh, I think we're okay. Uh, no other announcements? Watch um, those for show. Live, love, play. Yep. Mike and I are, what are we doing on Tuesday? Are we doing Star Trek Adventures or are we doing uh, um, we're doing. Exodus? We're supposed to be doing Star Trek Adventures this okay. coming week. We're supposed Great. to finish that that campaign, Great. hopefully. Mike and I are also involved in the um, the alpha testing for Star Trek Adventures, which is the new Star Trek role-playing game. And um, <clears throat> not it's not finished by any stretch of the imagination yet, but we are testing out what they have published already. And it's been very, very fun. I, I'm, I'm a tellerite. I am a trill. My character is a trill, and uh, we're having a good time. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, if you um, if you can find out the answer to the Xbox One, and possibly yeah. if it also is the same way in PS4, because I don't know um, about auto targeting or if it's even possible, please leave it on our Facebook page um, as a as a, a place to go to, and. Um, I am going to I'm working on something to for a contest for, for Facebook. So it's just a matter of getting a few things together. Um, but to please please help us with that. Um, selfishly it helps us get into some uh, easier to get into conventions and stuff. Not that we have a hard time, but yeah. We ran into something where there was one show that wanted us to have our numbers up on Facebook before they could give us access. And it was just kind of a bummer. We were thinking everything else about the show is doing really gangbusters. But for some reason, our, our Facebook likes are, need to be bumped yeah. up. So we do Facebook appreciate our... sharing, sharing, sharing. 
Which is weird because we just link at the moment. Yeah. Which is really weird because when you're 270 episodes in and yeah, and we have the numbers of downloads and all of that, but that's the way they they do the it. The good and news, yeah, for us the good news is is that people do when they do listen to us, they actually come to our site directly. Um, but when it comes to social media, oddly enough, it's the Facebook ones that they want. So while we Which do is appreciate weird because you a lot joining of businesses us over, go by Twitter huh? now. A lot of businesses go by yeah. Twitter. Well, they they were going off. They were going off of multiple, but they multiple. needed at least two to be astronomical okay. at a high. certain really high. So um, we would like to just do that. So please share with and everybody. And that's understandable. That's it is because absolutely for a press pass, that's, they don't want that's totally understandable. Yeah, absolutely. We're not we're not pissed by about this. We don't think it's unfair. No, we, it, it, it's an incentive for us to do to, to get better because we haven't pimped Facebook in quite a while. We kind of. I don't want to say we took it for granted, but we took it for granted. We did. So there you have it. Okay, you guys. Uh, next week we are we're going to be back. Mm, next week, I don't think I'm going to be here because we're going up to see the Lumineers. Have you heard of them in concert? Um, I have. And, and visit my parents in Connecticut. Nice. So. Oh, fun. Okay. Well, I think Mike and I are still on board. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, in a April, get, I do want to in get April. Sun in my steed, she, she'll fill the sarcasm, first sarcasm <laughs> quote. Uh, Mikey, April, I'll be traveling, and Terry will be traveling. Yes, just at the end, but Mikey's going to be here for a bit, so we'll do probably at least one show from here together. But then um, that last week in uh, that last couple weeks. A couple Sundays in April, I'll actually be gone. Well, we're really starting to keep Johnny Carson hours, aren't we? Yeah, I tell you. Well, <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay, years. until uh, next week for episode 271, live long and prosper. Capra. Yeah. <laughs> and true, Gene T270. <laughs> Music for the GNT show is provided by... Five Year Mission, Enterprise Blues Band, Warp 11, Andrew Allen, and Rathbore. The GNT Show is a BLB production. Move ahead, walk back to 10. Put a mini skirt on my own man. Represent the human race.
Show. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out Semantic Shenanigans and live, love, play.